Here is the recap of American Horror Story Roanoke. Married couple Shelby and Matt are interviewed for a documentary TV show in which they recall all the horrors of life in the Roanoke house. And they are played in this documentary by other actors. It all started with a quiet evening when unknown people attacked Matt, because of which the man went to the hospital and Shelby had a nervous miscarriage. In an attempt to start from scratch, the main characters decide to move to another state where they looked for a spacious house in the woods with a centuries-old history. On the purchase of the mansion claimed neighbors, so Matt had to offer almost double the amount so that the house still got them. Despite the change of environment, Shelby felt strange, and this house from the first moments began to scare her, but the girl did not dare to tell her husband about it. Soon, when Matt began to leave for work on business trips, Shelby began to see strange things. It all started with a rain of teeth, and then someone tried to drown her. Neither the first nor the second time the police did not believe the girl's stories, and her husband wrote everything off as stress after a failed pregnancy. The time comes for Matt to go on a business trip once again, only now he decided to prepare and installed cameras around the perimeter of the house, which he synchronized with his phone. Matt has also asked his sister Lee to come to their house and keep his wife company for the duration of his absence. Soon strange things start happening in the house again, but this time they are noticed by Lee, who is sure that Shelby is trying to attract attention to herself and convince Matt to leave the house. Lee hears strange noises and the girls head to the basement, where an old TV has a video on. The tape shows a person being confronted by a man with a pig's head. At this time, Matt sees a street camera video on his phone that clearly shows several people with torches entering a house. Being a hundred kilometers away from his loved ones, Matt rushes home at full speed, while Lee and Shelby come out of the basement and notice some kind of voodoo dolls hanging all over the house. When Matt arrives, no strangers are in the house anymore. However, when asked by Shelby to leave the house, Matt decides to reply that they need to fight and not let the neighbors intimidate them. Shelby ends up getting in her car and driving off alone, and soon runs over a woman in rags. Trying to make sure the victim doesn't need help, Shelby follows the stranger into the woods, where she stumbles upon dozens of people who are sacrificing some kind of human being. Trying to escape her pursuers, the girl runs out onto the road, where she is met by Lee. So Shelby gets to the hospital, but even this time the police do not believe her because they did not find anything in the clearing in the forest. The next day, Lee brings her daughter Flora into the house because after the divorce, the woman can very rarely see her. Soon the girl makes a friend Priscilla, whom none of the adults see. However, when the girl says that Priscilla asked to stop the bloodshed, otherwise all the inhabitants of the house will be killed, the mother has a little thought Soon the woman's ex-husband Mason arrives, who upon hearing the story from now on forbids Lee from bringing their daughter to the house. Meanwhile, Shelby and Matt find something like a sacrificial cross in the woods, after which they manage to convince the police to put a guard on their house. During the night, Matt is suddenly awakened by a phone call from an elderly woman asking for his help. He turns his head and sees two nurses in his house who are abusing and killing an elderly patient. Matt calls a policeman, however, the policeman finds nothing. After a while, the married couple notice the silhouette of a girl in the yard and decide to follow her. So the main characters discover a cellar and in it a camera with a tape on which Dr. Elias, the past owner of the house, tells the story of this place. It turns out that he came here to write a book about two nurses who opened a nursing home in this mansion and killed pensioners but they were not the only evil dwelling in the walls of the house. Soon Lee appears on the doorstep, having snatched Flora from school and brought her to the house. Realizing that for these actions she can go to jail, Shelby calls Mason and asks him to understand the feelings of his ex-wife. As a result, the man rides out to see them. However, at this time it becomes known that the girl disappeared without a trace, and soon her sweater is found on a tall tree. The search begins, and after a while in the woods they find a charred body tied to a pole. The victim turned out to be not Flora, but her father Mason. The tragedy does not give the spouses rest, and they decide to look at the cameras, from which they learn that Lee went out at night and was absent for four hours. 
Meanwhile, on the doorstep of the house appears Psychic Cricket, who conducts a spiritistic seance and learns about who threatens the family. It turns out that many years ago there was a colony not far from here, which was headed by Thomasina's husband, but the man had to leave his tribe for a while and his wife was ordered to wait for him in these lands. However, the supplies began to dwindle, so one day the colony decided to rebel against Tomasina and, putting an iron muzzle on her head, threw her into the forest to her certain death. However, there she met a forest witch and accepted a gift from her. Eventually, Tomasina returned to the colony and cruelly punished all those who were displeased with her rule. She then led her people to the place on which the couple's home now stood, and to make the land hers forever, she killed the entire colony, after which she sacrificed herself as well. Since then, the Rono colony has roamed these lands and killed all who trespass on them. Fortunately, Flora finds herself not with Thomasina, who is nicknamed the Butcher, but with the spirit of a little girl named Priscilla. Cricket agrees to help find the girl for $25,000 and Lee gives the go-ahead, and soon she is picked up by the police on suspicion of murdering her ex-husband. The next day, Shelby is attacked by a man with a pig's head, from which she is saved by Dr. Elias with a video from the cellar. From him, the protagonists learn about a pattern of deaths that only occurs when a blood moon appears in the sky. The doctor learns about Priscilla and helps the main characters find Flora, but during the negotiations, the butcher's men kill him and Flora escapes with the other spirits. Once close to home, the couple notices Psychic Cricket, who informs them that he knows how to help them. He goes to his home to get everything he needs, but on the highway he spots Flora and follows her into the woods. Meanwhile, the spirit of the forest witch lures Matt into the cellar and a special intimate connection takes place between them, during which the man learns all her backstory, emotions and feelings, but when he hears Shelby screaming, he still returns home. It turns out that at this time, the first settlers surrounded the house and in front of the main characters decided to kill Flora in order to pay tribute to the land. But Priscilla helps the girl to survive. However, the colony kills the psychic cricket instead of her, showing the survivors that they will be next. Thinking that all is lost, the main characters descend to the basement, where they see the spirit of the first owner of the house, Edward, who decides to help them and guides them through secret tunnels into the forest. However, in the forest they are found by a family of cannibals. It turns out that for many years they have an agreement with the butcher, according to which they supply her with people for sacrifice, and she does not attack them. So the cannibals take the family to the spirit of Thomasina, but on the way Matt manages to escape and the main characters try to hide in the woods, but the mother cannibal finds them and breaks Shelby's leg. After that, she brings them to the house where they are already waiting for the butcher. After a while, a car with Lee appears and the couple and Floor manage to escape. This is how season one of my nightmare in Roanoke ended. Let me remind you, this is the show in which the actors played and the real spouses Shelby and Matt look like this. In the future, for your convenience, I will call the actors as well as the characters they played. On the wave of success, producer Sydney decides to shoot the continuation of the show and call there as the actors who played roles in season one and the main characters from the real world. All the characters agreed to take part, but only the candidacy of the butcher, Sydney rejected as after the release of the show actress went a little crazy and too into the role of his screen character. During the preparation of the house for the next shooting team, Sydney began to notice certain oddities, but because of the high ratings producer decided not to pay attention to them. So the first person who died on the set of the second season was a man who played the first owner of the mansion. Then there is an angry actress who played the butcher appear. She kills Sydney and his assistants. Then she tries to intimidate the rest of the show, but meets the real slaughterer and dies. Soon the girls who decided to escape into the woods are caught by a family of cannibals, but they manage to escape. Meanwhile, in the mansion, Shelby catches Matt getting intimate with the forest witch and learns that he has fallen in love with her, and that's why he came back to the cursed house. Unable to contain her emotions, the girl crushes his skull and soon slits her own throat. After a while, 
another actor appears on the doorstep of the house, who having learned about what has happened, suggests leaving this place as soon as possible. On the way he is killed by cannibals, and the women have to flee. Meanwhile, three bloggers who are fanatical about the TV show arrive in the forest. They intend to find evidence of the existence of spirits in order to create good content and attract new subscribers, but in the meantime they meet Lee in the forest, who has made a deal with the forest witch, just like Thomasina once did. Lee kills one of the bloggers, forcing the others to hide in a wagon. Here they see on the cameras that only actresses Shelby and Lee are left in the house, and the real Lee is coming to kill them. The teens warn the actresses of the danger, but they are met outside the house by the spirits of the early settlers, who sacrifice the bloggers. Meanwhile, Lee sneaks into the house, kills her actress, and drives the second victim into the cellar, seriously injuring her. In the morning, the police arrive at the house and find dozens of dead bodies in a live Lee, after which the actress Shelby comes out. The girl, wanting revenge, snatches a gun from a policeman, thereby provoking the other cops to shoot her. Some time passes, and the court hearing on Lee's case begins, because according to Flora's statements, it was her mother who killed her father in the woods. However, the court decided not to consider her daughter's testimony, and Lee was acquitted. Soon the ghost hunters decide to go to Roanoke's house to find exclusive footage, but at this time in the house appears Lee, who has learned about the disappearance of her daughter. She hopes that she will be able to find her here, and uninvited guests are advised to leave the house as soon as possible. Hunters for the paranormal decide not to listen, for which they soon pay with their lives. And Lee does find Flora. It turns out that the girl wants to become a ghost to protect Priscilla from the butcher, but Lee does not want her daughter to lose her future and die, so she decides to sacrifice herself and become a mother to Priscilla, hoping that one day Flora will be able to forgive her for killing her father. This is the end of the season six. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the like button. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.